Hello guys, in this video we're going to continue our analysis how trade makes everybody better off. In the previous video we uh, took the example of two countries, Japan and Korea, and we said they're producing two goods, TVs and steel, both of the countries, and we calculated opportunity cost for both countries for both products. We also introduced the theory of comparative advantage, and we said that comparative advantage, this is country's ability to produce with the lower opportunity cost lower opportunity cost and we said that japan has a comparative and a comparative advantage in production of tvs because japan producing tvs at the lower opportunity cost than korea and we said that korea has a comparative advantage in production of units of steel because korea's cost of production of each unit of steel is lower than in japan so what does it mean for Japan in Korea? It means that Japan should specialize only in production of units of steel and Korea should specialize only in production of units. I'm sorry, Japan should specialize only in production of units of TVs and Korea should specialize only in production of units of steel. Now we need to answer a question. At what prices countries are going to benefit from trade? Can we just set any price for one TV and for one unit of steel or should be some kind of range of prices? Let's suppose Japan produced three TVs. Japan is going to take one TV and send it to Korea. My question is, remember, Korea have to pay to Japan for this one unit of TV and Korea is going to pay in units of steel. In our very simple model, we don't have US currency, we don't have Belarusian or Russian ruble circulating over here. So Korea is going to pay for this one TV in units of steel. So my question is, what is the minimum Japan will be willing to accept for this one unit of TV. What is the minimum amount of units of steel Japan will be willing to accept from Korea? And the answer is going to be two units of steel because this is how much it costs to Japan to produce its TV in its own country. So Japan producing TV and spending two units of steel. So therefore Korea should pay to Japan for this one TV, at least two units of steel. Just think about, it. let's suppose Korea buying TV from Japan and it's saying that I'm going to pay you one unit of steel for this TV, for this TV. My question is, is Japan going to agree to these terms of trade? And the answer is no, because Japan is producing TV in its own country and spend two units of steel. Therefore, selling this TV for one unit of steel to Korea is not going to be beneficial to Japan. My second question, so therefore the price of one TV should be at least, let's suppose we're going to say equal or greater than two units of steel. Now, my question is, what is the maximum that Korea will be willing to give up or what is the maximum units of steel that Korea will be willing to give up for this one unit of TV? Just think about it. If Japan is going to say to Korea, you know what, I'm selling you this TV and you need to pay me for this TV five units of steel, five units of steel. Is Korea going to agree to these terms? And the answer is no, because Korea can produce this TV in its own country for four units of steel. So therefore, Korea the most will be willing to give up for this one TV, four units of steel. Therefore, conclusion is going to be that the price of one TV should be greater than two units of steel and less than four units of steel. So the rule is that the price of the product should be between the two opportunity cost, between the two opportunity cost, between this two and this four. What about, what about the price of one unit of steel? So Korea is really good at producing steel because Korea has a comparative advantage in production of steel. Korea is producing eight units of steel and send in one unit of steel to Japan. What is the minimum 
Korea will be willing to accept for this one unit of steel. Remember, Japan is going to pay in units of TV. So what is the minimum Korea will be willing to accept? And the answer is quarter of TV. Guys, should be here should be actually to apologize for that. So and the answer is going to be at least quarter of TV because this is how much it cost for Korea to produce one unit of steel in its own country. So therefore one unit of steel should be at least greater than a quarter. And then my question is how many units of TVs Japan or what is the maximum units of TVs Japan will be willing to give up for this one unit of steel? And the answer is half, isn't it? Because this is how much it cost for Japan to produce one unit of steel in its own country. Just think about what if Korea is sending one unit of steel to Japan and Korea is saying, you know what, you need to pay me three units of TV for this one unit of steel. So once again, Korea produced one unit of steel, sent it to Japan, and Korea is saying, you need to pay me three units of TV for this one unit of steel. Is Japan going to agree to these terms? And the answer is no, because Japan can produce one unit of steel in its own country for much, much cheaper. So therefore, the price of units of steel, in order for this trade to make beneficial for both countries, have to be greater than a quarter and less than half units of TV. So guys, the rule is that the price should be within the two opportunity costs. Let's continue our analysis and see how countries are going to benefit from trade. So we figured out the price of um, uh, each TV and the price of each steel. Let's suppose that two countries agrees, agreed on the following prices that Okay, this one should be two. I'm going to correct this. And we're going to say that the price of one TV, so once again, this is the price that prices that countries agreed on. The price of one TV is going to be equal three units of steel. And the price of one unit of steel is going to be equal one third of TV. So remember, does this satisfy our requirements from the from the previous slide? And the answer is yes. The price of one TV was supposed to be between two and four, so this is correct. And the price of one unit of steel should have been between a quarter and a half. So this is satisfy our requirements. So trade should be beneficial for both countries. Now, let's suppose Japan produced three TVs. Japan is taking one TV, so Japan produced three TV. Japan is taking one TV and send it to Korea. My question is, when Japan selling one TV to Korea, what combination of TVs and steel Japan is going to end up with? So based on, we need to analyze these prices, we need to look at these prices, and we need to see how how many of each units you know the country is producing and when we start trading we want to figure out well when japan produce three tvs japan is going to take one tv and send it to korea japan is going to end up with combination of what um, japan is going to end up with what combination of tvs and and steel so remember we took three tvs send it one to korea we're going to end up with two tvs when we send this one TV to Korea, Korea is going to pay us. How much? Well, it's going to pay us based on these prices. One TV, the price of one TV is three units of steel. So therefore, Korea is going to send us over here three units of steel. And therefore, Japan is going to end up after trade with this combination of two TVs and three units of steel. Now, guys, what are we going to do? We're going to plot this point on production possibilities frontier. So Japan is going to end up after trade with two TVs and somewhere over here, three units of steel. If 
if your graph is you know correct up to scale this point i'm going to put this point a is going to be outside of production possibilities frontier guys remember points outside of production possibilities frontier what do we know about these points we know that these points actually not attainable they're not possible because we don't have enough resources available but when we start trading point a becomes a consumption point and this is benefit from trade just think about is point a better than any point on production possibilities frontier for japan and the answer is yes because point a provides you with a greater combination of goods that you can actually consume so once again point a is going to be consumption point you cannot or japan cannot produce in point a but after we start specializing and trading with korea japan all of a sudden can consume in point a and this is the benefit from trade that japan is going to receive remember when japan is going to be self-sustained country all points on production possibilities frontier those are production points and those are also consumption points when we start trading point a is not a production point we cannot produce in this point but what we can do we can consume now let's look at korea remember korea is really good at producing units of steel let's suppose korea is taking uh, korea produce eight units of steel then korea is going to take three units of steel and send it to japan so my question is Korea is going to end up with combination of with what combination of TVs and units of steel. So we produce eight units of steel, send three units of steel to Japan. Therefore, we have five units of steel left. Japan is going to pay us for the to pay Korea for three units of steel. How much? Well, it's going to pay this much: one unit of steel, one third of TV. Three units of steel is going to give korea one tv isn't it so one unit of steel one third of tv but when we sell to japan three units of steel japan is going to give us one unit of tv so therefore korea is going to end up with this combination of goods if we're going to take this and plot on production possibilities frontier once again if your scale is correct let's suppose this is five this point b is going to be outside of production possibilities frontier point b is not possible korea cannot produce in point p b but korea can consume in point b so this is going to be consumption point why korea can consume in point b because we start specializing and we start trading with another country again point b is a better point than any points on production possibilities frontier for korea because point b gives you a greater combination of goods to consume so this is guys how trade makes these two countries better off so what do we have over here gains from trade um so gains from trade are going to be because we um apply comparative advantage we look at the country's opportunity cost and we specialize in production that we are really good at to produce so therefore when we start specializing in um goods that we produce at a lower opportunity cost we um increase our economic pie we kind of waste less um resources and therefore our economic pie is going to um increase and therefore countries are going to gain from trade i'm going to stop at this point and um i'll record one more little video for this chapter